ಪ್ರೀತಿಯ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳೇ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಕ್ರೇಷನ್ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ತಿಳ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋಣ ಸಣ್ಣದಾಗಿ ಹೇಳಬೇಕು ಅಂದರೆ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಕ್ರೇಷನ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ರಿಮೂವಲ್ ಆಫ್ ನೈಟ್ರೋಜನಸ್ ವೇಸ್ಟ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಬಾಡಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನಾರ್ಮಲಿ ಯು ನೋ ದಟ್ ದಿ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಟೈಪ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಕ್ರೇಟ್ರಿ ಆ್ಯನಿಮಲ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ದೇರ್ ದೇ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಕ್ರೀಟ್ ನೈಟ್ರೋಜನ್ ವೇಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದೆಮ್ ಯೂರಿಯೋಟೆಲಿಕ್ ಆ್ಯನಿಮಲ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಈಸ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎನ್ ಲಿಕ್ವಿಡ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ವೆರಿ ಡೈಲ್ಯೂಟೆಡ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಈಸ್ ಯೂರಿಯಾ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಯೂರಿಕ್ ಆ್ಯಸಿಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದೋಸ್ ಆ್ಯನಿಮಲ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಬರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ದೇ ರಿಲೀಸ್ ದ ನೈಟ್ರೋಜನ್ ವೇಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಯೂರಿಕ್ ಆ್ಯಸಿಡ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಯೂರಿಕೋಟೆಲಿಕ್ ಆ್ಯನಿಮಲ್ಸ್ ದೆನ್ ಅದರ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಮೋನೋಟೆಲಿಕ್ ಆ್ಯನಿಮಲ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ದ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಸಮ್ ದಟ್ ರಿಲೀಸ್ ಅಮೋನಿಯಾ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಅ ನೈಟ್ರೋಜನ್ ವೇಸ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನಾರ್ಮಲಿ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಫಿಶಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಅಮೋನಿಯಾ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಟಾಕ್ಸಿಕ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ರಿಲೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ವಾಟರ್ ದೇರ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಮೊದಲನೇದಾಗಿ ನೀವು ಇದರಲ್ಲಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಕ್ರೇಷನಲ್ಲಿ ತಿಳ್ಕೊಬೇಕಾಗಿರೋದೆ ಶುರುವಾದಲ್ಲಿ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ಅಂತ ತಿಳ್ಕೊಳ್ಳಿ ಯಾವ ಯಾವ ಥರದ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಕ್ರೇಟ್ರಿ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಮೂರು ಥರ ತಿಳ್ಕೊಂಡ್ರಿ ಈಗ ನಾವೀಗ ಕಾನ್ಸನ್ಟ್ರೇಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇರೋದು ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಕ್ರೇಟ್ರಿ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಮೇಲೆ ಮಾತ್ರ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ಕೆಲವು ವಿಷಯಗಳನ್ನು ನನ್ನ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆಗಳ ಮುಖಾಂತರ ಕೇಳ್ತೀನಿ ಒಂದೊಂದನಾಗಿ ಓದ್ತಾ ಹೋಗ್ತೀನಿ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ಆನ್ಸರ್ ನೀವು ಗೆಸ್ ಮಾಡ್ಬೋದು ಲೆಟ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ದ ಸ್ಮಾಲೆಸ್ಟ್ ಫಂಕ್ಷನಲ್ ಯೂನಿಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಿಡ್ನಿ ಈಸ್ ದೆರ್ ಆರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಆಪ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ನೆಫ್ರಾನ್ ಕಲೆಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಟ್ಯೂಬ್ ಗ್ಲೋವರುಲಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬೌಮನ್ಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾಪ್ಸ್ಯೂಲ್ ವಿತ್ ರೆಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಮಿ ಶೋ ದ ಡಯಾಗ್ರಾಮ್ ದ ಡಯಾಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಿಡ್ನಿ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಶೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಯು ಹಿಯೋ ದರ್ ಆರ್ ಟೂ ಕಿಡ್ನೀಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ಬೀನ್ ಶೇಪ್ಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಕನೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಟು ದ ಯುರೇಟರ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾರಿ ದ ವೇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಯುರಿನ್ ಥ್ರೂ ದಿಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ಯುರಿನರಿ ಬ್ಲಾಡರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಯುರಿನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಯುರಿನರಿ ಬ್ಲಾಡರ್ ಈಸ್ ರಿಲೀಸ್ ಥ್ರೂ ದ ಯುರೇಥ್ರಾ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ಮಿಕ್ಚುರೇಷನ್ ದೇರ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಕ್ರೀಟರಿ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಇನ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ಸ್ ಅಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಸ್ಕಿನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅದರ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಕ್ರೀಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಮೇಜರ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಕ್ರೀಟರಿ ಆರ್ಗನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಕಿಡ್ನೀಸ್ ದ ಟೂ ಕಿಡ್ನೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಯುರೇಟರ್ ದೆನ್ ದ ಯುರೇನರಿ ಬ್ಲಾಡರ್ ಯುರೇಥ್ರಾ ದೇ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಟ್ ದ ಟೋಟಲ್ urinary system or excretory system then coming to this question the smallest functional unit of kidney that is nephron as given four answers among that i am showing you the structure of nephron this is the right answer as you all know this is a nephron the structure of nephron involve the first part which is the filtering unit we call this as the bowman's capsule the bowman's capsule inside will have number of blood vessels you can see the upper blood vessel which is called as the afferent arteriole and the next one which is taking the blood away from this it is called efferent arteriole afferent arteriole bring the blood to the bowman's capsule and efferent arteriole takes the blood away from this so the blood vessels that are present within the bowman's capsule that is called as the glomerulus bowman's capsule along with the glomerulus we call it as the malfusion carpel this can be asked as a question which is malfusion carpels component what are the components of malfusion carpels if they ask you you should write glomerulus and bowman's capsule then coming to the continuation the bowman's capsule continue in the form of extended tubules highly called tubules the first tubule we call it as a proximal convoluted tubule then this is connected to the thinner tubule we call it as henley's loop the henley's loop has one going down this is called the descending limb of henley the one which is moving up it is called the ascending limb of henley then it is connected to dct that is distal convoluted tubule then distal convoluted tubule will get joined to the last one called as a collecting tubule this collecting tubule has many such nephrons connections so this is the important structure you have to remember because most of the times this nephron structure is given for you and ask you to identify the right labelings they would have mentioned it in the form of
then distal convoluted tubule joins the collecting tubule. Therefore, this structure is an important structure for human excretory system and most of the previous tests if you observe the CET questions, this is one among them in 2 to 3 years once they may ask this question. So, just go through this and this diagram if you already you know perfectly you should know which part it is. So, let us come to the question it is nephron collecting tubule glomerulus Bowman's capsule all four of them are the units of nephron itself therefore, the answer should be nephron. Let us move on to the second question, it is about columns of Bertini, columns of Bertini where are they found, they are found in. You have other options like testis, ovaries, kidney and liver. So, you will have to think columns of Bertini because it has various names, you know other name for columns of Bertini is medullary rays. When I say medullary rays, you might get confused with the botany. But columns of Bertini, that is the reason why we call them as properly columns of Bertini. These are found not in the testis because testis is a sexual organ. Then ovaries, you will have the graphene follicle with the ovaries, there is no columns of Bertini in that. Yes, there is kidney, it is the right answer, it is C option, kidney and liver cannot have it. Therefore, to just show you how or where are columns of Bertini, I am giving you the kidney structure which is showing LS in that we are observing all the parts of kidney apart from the other parts which you have learnt in nephrons. This is only kidney which contains millions of nephrons. You all know nephrons are the major functional units of kidney. Therefore, when I draw kidney, the next unit to be drawn is nephron. But as I discussed the question nephron, therefore, nephron we are leaving now, I am talking only about the kidney. The kidney LS shows the outermost layer called as the renal capsule, I drawn light pink color, but anyway it will be reddish in color. Then coming to the renal cortex, it is the second layer of the kidney followed by renal medulla, renal medulla is the inner part in which number of Bowman's capsule or the whole nephrons tubules are hanging here, these form the ray like structures in the medulla, these are called medullary rays or they are called as columns of Bertini, these are the ones. Then other parts of the kidney, this is called renal pelvis, renal pelvis is divided into number of renal calyces or renal calyx. Then it is followed by renal pyramids, small small ones These are called renal pyramids. Then the renal pelvis by collecting all the urine from all these will be collected in the renal pelvis. From there it will pass to the ureter and already we know that from the ureter it is collected into the urinary bladder and from the urinary bladder it is excreted, it is micturated. Therefore, this structure you will have to understand properly because this structure some more labelings you may get apart from this. Therefore, Renal structure or the kidney structure is an important structure for you to get the labeled parts and identify the labeled parts correctly. So, that is about kidney and you know the question answer the columns of Bertini is found in kidney. Coming to the next question. It is a man is starving and also without beverages, there will be what happens if the man is starving and also he is having no beverages, what may be the effect? The option one is more urea is in the blood, second option is less urea in the blood, third option is more uric acid in the blood, last one is less urea in urine. So, you must have to think about this. Because when the person has no beverage and he is having, having even no food, then what happens to the urine formation? Then it cannot be filtered because there is no water content and apart from that the man is starving, no food, if at all nitrogen waste have to be produced, there must be protein, but there is no protein also because he is starving. So, what can happen is? he will be having although urine condition urine is concentrated 
urine is formed, it will get back into the blood and blood will contain more urea. Therefore, first option is right. Moving to the next question, excretion of nitrogenous waste products in semi-solid form, in which form it occurs? So, in which organism exactly excretion happens in the semi-solid form? Because you already discussed this in your regular classes that what are the types of organisms based on the nitrogen waste? Ammonia, it is called ammonotelic and you know ammonia is a gas. So, that cannot be the answer. Then, if it is producing the nitrogenous waste in the form of urea, it is liquid and they should have a urinary bladder. All mammals and land organisms will have the urea which is produced, mostly mammals. Then coming to the next one, it must be the uric acid because uric acid is the solid nitrogen waste which is released along with the fecal matter and it is in birds. So, with this background, if you go through the options, you will come to know which is the answer. First option is ureotelic animals, second option is ammonotelic animals, third one is uricotelic animals, last one is amniotes. Therefore, among the four, you will have to select only uricotelic animals, that is the option 3. The next question says, which of the following is most toxic waste matter? Means, among the option you have to select which is very toxic to the body. If it is present in the body, what is going to happen? Therefore, we are going to study which is the more toxic substance which is excreted. One of the, the options are urea, uric acid, ammonia and hippuric acid. Four things are there. Coming to the first one, urea. You already know urea is a less toxic one because it is diluted because it is combined with water, it is less toxic one. Coming to the uric acid, it is normally produced in the birds and it is solid one. And then coming to the ammonia, it is a gas. So, gas is more toxic, ammonia gas is more toxic that is why ammonotelic animals which are which are present in the water, they release nitrogen waste in the form of ammonia. Therefore, it will be directly dissolved in water. Coming to the hippuric acid, it is one of the another excretory product along with urea it is wasted. Therefore, it is removed through the waste, but hippuric acid is not that toxic as that of the ammonia. Therefore, the most toxic component of our waste matter is ammonia. The next question is about the kidney stones. The kidney stones are the crystals of what are the kidney stones are containing. So, first one is sodium chloride, silica, calcium oxalate and also potassium chloride. You all have to little bit know about the kidney stones. So, let me explain you what is actually kidney stone. So, kidney stones are formed in most of the people that undergo dehydration. Whenever a person is dehydrated means he takes less water or he is having a huge sweating. That time most of the time nitrogenous waste get concentrated and they may form the stones. But apart from this that those are called the uric acid stones when such stones due to high concentration of the uric acid they are formed they are called uric acid stones. They may form stones. But along with that, some more types of stones are formed due to our food components. Like one is calcium oxalate, which is normally taken through diet, right? And calcium oxalate is found in most of the plant products, like your amorphophallus, that is yam, along with colocasia, and along with that, the spinach. They produce more, they contain actually more calcium oxalate stones. Therefore, if at all you consume more of spinach, spinach is palak. If you consume more of this, then you are supposed, you may get the 
oxalate, calcium oxalate stones. Sodium chloride and silica and potassium chloride will not form the stones. The major cause is the calcium oxalate. Then calcium oxalate stones compared to the uric acid stone and other one, they are very sharp. They are small but they have sharp edges. Therefore, calcium oxalate stones if they are formed in the kidney, they are going to pain heavily. There will be very much pain felt by the patient in his abdomen and while passing urine, they may penetrate and they may lead to the blood in urine. Therefore, calcium oxalate stones are more painful stones than other two types of stones. Therefore, in this question, the right option is calcium oxalate. Calcium oxalate, the C option, which forms the kidney stones that are more sharper.